Hello, welcome to another Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Scratch to make your very own working clock. So let's get started. There we go. If we click on Scratch and we click on Create, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the face of our clock. So all we need to do is let's get rid of Scratch to Cat and let's go to Paint. And we're going to use the Circle tool. You can use whatever fill and whatever outline you want. I'm going to change it to, there we go, that should do a nice um, kind of lilac colour. So I've clicked on circle. What I'm also going to do now is before I draw my circle, I'm going to hold down the shift button. And what this does is it forces the ellipse tool, which is the one that we've got at the moment, to create a perfect circle, as you can see there. If I don't hold down shift, then you see that um, I can create all sorts of uh, kind of circlish shapes, ellipse shapes, uh, but we want a perfect circle for ours. So hold it down and drag it to about the size that you want it and place it wherever you want on the screen. There we go. Good. So there's my clock face. Let's rename my sprite to clock face. Good. So there's the face of the clock. Now what we're going to do is we'll create the uh, second hand. So again, we'll go back and we'll click on paint, which is good. And now what we're going to do, you have a couple of choices. Uh, I'm going to use the circle tool here again to create a similar kind of a, a long kind of rounded arm there for my um, for my hand here, the clock, the minute hand. You could, if you wanted, use the, um, the rectangle to do a more kind of square rectangular shape. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I'm going to use this uh, ellipse sort of shape. So what we do now is we create our shape and I'm going to put the fill a slightly different. I'm going to go a slightly darker color here and uh, let's click on paint and we'll paint that slightly darker, darker purple. Good. Now, here we go. Now, there's my arm and it's going to rotate around the center of the circle. But in order to make it rotate correctly, what we need to do is this little point here needs to be right exactly we click on select exactly at the end of your um at the end of your arm here and it's actually now at the bottom there so now what i can do is i can move it into the center so this bit here that uh, little uh, little target there that's the point of rotation and you need that because otherwise if you were to have it in the middle here then this arm would spin around in a circle uh, up around there which is no good so there we go there's our second arm which is good and let's just call this the second arm of the clock good and now what we're going to do is we're going to make it rotate and we need to make it rotate in time to the correct time so what are we going to use well we're going to use here in the sensing bit here and if you go to current there we are, current, and you can select, we're going to select the current second. And actually, if you double click on the current second, it will tell you what time it is, uh, or the second of the time of the current time. So 52, 55, etc. And now what we're going to do is we want to say, okay, this arm needs to go around in this circle uh, to the right point. But how do we do the right point? Well, that's actually quite easy. Uh, so what we do is we take the current second, uh, which could be anywhere between 1 and 60, and we divide it by 60. And that will give us then a, uh, a decimal point number. So it's like a third of the way around just over, and it will go up to 0.4 of the way around. And that's all the way around in the circle, starting, um, starting at the beginning of the circle and working its way around to the end. So from 0, we'll go somewhere between 0 and 1. But in a circle, it doesn't go from 0 to 1. It goes from 0 to 360. So what we need to do here is we take whatever this uh, 0 point something is and we times it by 360. And what will this will do now is it will tell us how far round on the circle it is. There you go. It's gone back to, back to 0. And each time, 60 seconds round, it will tick all the way around. So how do we do that? Well, what we do is we say, okay, let's uh, go to where are we at? point in direction. And we set it to there. And we say, okay, at the start of the game, 
will just infinitely forever there we go point in direction to whatever it is and now if we press start you'll see that it ticks away happily ticking around in the circle but there is a bit of a uh, not a bit of a problem really scratch doesn't start when you say zero scratch doesn't start zero at the top and I can show you this because if we go to the current second, when we get to about here, it should say 45 seconds there uh, if that arm was right. But actually, it's too far around. It's all the way around to there now. One second. It's actually all the way up here. So our clock arm here is going too slow. Well, how much too slow? Well, it's actually, if it should be here at the top, it's 90 degrees too slow. So what we need to do is we need to say, OK, take um, whatever this direction is here that it's just calculated and we'll add on 90 degrees. And now if we start it again, 30 seconds, there you go. So it's about perfect. As you can see, my clock arm here is a little bit too long. So what I'll do here is I'll just click costumes. Uh, I'll go up to the top of the costume. Click on there. I'll just make them a little bit smaller. Oh, a bit too small, I think, there. There we go. However you want it. That's perfect. Good. So there is my second arm. Now, how do we do the rest of them? Well, actually, it's really quite easy. Let's do the minute arm next. What we'll do, we'll right-click on the second arm, and we'll duplicate it. And we'll call this minute arm. There we go. Brilliant. Uh, our minute arm here just needs to move to the right spot there. There we go. And this time, if we click start, you can't see it because it's actually hiding now behind the second arm. And the reason is, is that again, um, it's we need to change that to minutes. And that should now work perfectly. Here we go. Because, again, there are 60 seconds in a minute, so and there are 60 minutes in an hour. And if we just change that to current minutes, let's have a look, 43. Yeah, that's about 43, isn't it? So now we've got the second arm working, and we've got the minute arm working. I think what I will do, though, with the minute arm is I'll just, um, I'll just click on that, and I'll change the fill color to something a bit darker so it stands out a bit. Yeah, there we go. So there's my minute arm. And there's our second arm, which, uh, second arm and minute arm. Just move those to make sure they're just touching right where they need to be in the center, about there. There we go. Good. So there's the second arm. There's the minute arm. Again, what we'll do is we'll right click on the minute arm and we'll duplicate it. And that gives us the hour arm. Move him into the right spot there. There we go. And this time on our, oh, let's change that to hour arm. There we go. Now this time it's slightly different because we don't use the current minute or the current second. We use the current hour, which is good. But this time round, um, we don't. Uh, there aren't 60 hours per 12 hours of the rotation here. There are only 12. So we change that to 12. And now there you go. So there's the hour, which is about seven. There's the minute, which is about 45. And then the seconds is ticking around. The hour arm is a little bit long. So let's click on him. Make him a bit shorter. There you go. And that's about right. So the only thing now to do really is you can add some numbers around the clock face if you want to. Or you can leave it blank. Uh, that's nice and easy. Just click on your clock face. Uh, click on text. And just add yourself some text on um, using whatever font you want. Uh, so here, if I'm going to use font uh, sans serif, and here we could do a number one. There we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger, maybe. There we go. And two. Just add all your numbers right round and put them wherever you want in the correct place. So there we go. Let's just click on that to make that look a bit. Oops, a little bit bigger. All the way. Around. Oops. All the way around. Just move my clock face now. Uh, one, two. You could do a better job than I can, but um, I'm just doing a quick job for the video. There we are. Four, 
Oops, five. I thought I should add a few more of these. Six, seven, eight. Just add these in the middle for the moment. Nine, ten, eleven. This is a strange looking clock. There we go. And let's just add those along. I'll just move these out of the way. Make sure you do these properly, but um, just move them. Five, six, seven. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's somewhere near, isn't it? My one's a bit big there. I'll just make it a bit smaller so it's all the summer size to the rest of them. Hey, oops. There you go. So there you go. You've got a fully functioning clock uh, and it's all working. Um, only one quick point to note. One thing you might do by accident while you're doing the game is uh, while you're making your clock is you might accidentally click on this clock face here and put all of the other things to the back and they'll be hidden out the back. If that does happen, all you need to do here is click on code and you need to do in your clock face, make sure you're on your clock, um, wherever your code is for your clock. Where's that just gone? Well, we haven't got any code for the code for the clock. Uh, and all we have to do is just create something here that says go forward one layers. And we can just say, okay, when you press start uh, forever and change that to go backwards, um, not go back one layers, go to the back. Uh, where's that? Go to and make sure you change it to the back layer. So it's um, always going to the back layer there. Hey, there you go. So there's a working clock. Um, and hopefully that'll be useful in your games. If you like this tutorial, then please do make sure you subscribe, uh, like and comment on the video. Uh, and thank you very much.